Governor's Office, sir. And uh, Lori, I'm going to ask you to come to the stage. And uh, Lori is going to talk a bit about the, uh, uh, I guess the, uh, the culture and uh, heritage infrastructure plan. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to begin by saying that I'm particularly interested as it relates to Jeremy Street, and certainly um, in any cultural project, of that interesting intersection between place and space, arts and culture, and the economy. And um, in order to sort of give you a bit of a framework, I'd like to borrow from Michael McClellan, ERA Architects, and he's the next speaker up. Um, the Cultural Corridors Plan. This was something that our office uh, commissioned Michael to do back in 2001. And essentially, it's a plan that sets out for the city seven cultural corridors. So essentially, you have the waterfront is the first cultural corridor, the uh, old shoreline as the second, Garrison Common, John Street, Young Street, and of course we're talking about Jarvis Street tonight. And the seventh one is the Dalton River. So, um, just to give you a dozen visuals in order to you, for you to turn your mind to Jarvis Street as a cultural corridor, the first one is Luminato. And this was um, a light installation that um, uh, was done in 2007 at the base of uh, Jarvis. Uh, Sugar Beach, this was a former uh, surface commercial parking lot in an industrial area, again at the base of Jarvis. It's now transformed into a two-acre whimsical park. It uh, is composed of three uh, parts a uh, waterfront promenade, a um, urban beach, and a plaza. To the east of Sugar Beach is Chorus Entertainment, and it is one of Canada's largest media uh, companies with a focus on children's television and children's publishing. On the other side of uh, Sugar Beach on the west, is the Red Path Sugar Factory. And this is a mural entitled The Whaling Wall. And it's on the north facade of Red Path Sugar Factory. The factory runs 24-7, full out. Uh, however, um, the raw sugar shed is open to the public uh, third week in May, every year for doors open. Red Path Sugar Factory also has on site a museum that's well attended by tourist groups as well as uh, school children. Moving north from the foot of Jarvis all up to Bloor is the St. Lawrence Market, one of the best food markets in the world. Um, St. Lawrence Hall, um, a special place for events and weddings, of course. And we should mention Market Gallery, which is on the second floor of the South Market, which tells Toronto's story from the 19th century with photos, maps, um, fine art. Also on the Jarvis Street Cultural Corridor is the Toronto Sculpture Garden. This has um, been a spectacular example of a public private partnership with the Odette Foundation, and they have just uh, celebrated the 30th anniversary. Uh, St. James Park and the cathedral in the background, formal gardens, water fountain, uh, jointly owned by the city of Toronto and the Catholic Church, uh, and of course home to Occupy Toronto in recent days, mm -hmm. months. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mackenzie House. This is one of Toronto's heritage museums and home to our first mayor. 
This is just a Jarvis and Shooter. This is um, Paint Your Face, a mural that was produced by four graffiti artists and sponsored by the United Church of Canada. And Alan Gardens, you can hear a lot more about that and with the next speaker, but one of the oldest parks in Toronto. Uh, National Ballet School, Canada's National Ballet School, an excellent example of adaptive reuse of a heritage property, and also one of Toronto's major cultural organizations. And then finally, I'd just like to uh, uh, mention Rogers, Rogers Campus, uh, a giant in the communication, technology, and entertainment industry. And of course, um, like the last week I talked about in the foreground, is one of the Jarvis Street mansions. So those are just some images to get you thinking about Jarvis Street as a cultural corridor. Thank you.